Hello, I'm Steven, and in this video, I'm going to show you the slip extravaganza blanket. I'm going to show you how to cast on, how to work the bubble stitch, and give you some color ideas to knit this circular blanket. If you want to skip ahead to the technique tutorials, you can click the timestamp below this video and skip on ahead to get right to this cast on in the center of the blanket. This is the small size of the slip extravaganza blanket. It begins in the center with a circular cast on, and then it increases outward to the honeycombs, the columns, and this big bubble border. The small size is still pretty big with DK weight yarn, but it's more of a decorative couch blanket or a throw for your lap, so you can put it on your lap and knit and watch TV. If you want a big bedspread and like an epic project for the whole knitting season. This takes a little bit longer, but it comes with this huge chevron border. So if you want a big statement piece, I don't know what makes a bigger statement than the large size of this blanket. This is probably the biggest blanket that I've ever designed. So just a warning, you're going to need a big circular needle for that bind off, but it's super worth it. This is the small size of the blanket, again, starting in the center and increasing to the honeycombs, we have slip stitch columns and the bubbles, so you only have to work with one color at a time. If you want to knit the small size in a similar version, you can use Westwool Tandem for the main color. This is the Marinier colorway, a really dark blue. You need three skeins of the main color for the center, to frame the honeycombs. This main color is in the columns, and you'll need that main color for the Pico border. This is a beautiful hem to finish the small size. Once you have three skeins of your main color picked out, go ahead and add some contrast color pops. You can use hand spun yarn. I used some Republic of Wool hand spun yarn for some of my honeycombs. It's really fun to use those precious hand dyed, hand spun colorways because you only need little amounts of yarn for each section. If you have fingering weight yarn, like this orange is super yummy and saturated, but it's really thin. So to get the DK weight gauge, you can hold a strand of fingering weight together with a strand of mohair. Or you could also just hold two strands of fingering weight together. So focus on your colors first and don't matter about the yarn weight. Because if the yarn is too skinny, just hold a strand of mohair with a color or double up your fingering weight yarns. This is the large size of the slip extravaganza blanket, and it is just like the small size, but the small size stops right here. So as you're knitting the blanket, if you're like, uh, it's big enough, I've knit enough, I wanna knit a sweater or knit another project, you can stop early for the small size. But if you keep going for this large size, you get to do this extra check pattern of slip stitches, some triangles, and this epic chevron border. When you work the chevron border, you have a lot of stitches, so you might need two or three circular needles. So I'm just warning you, you'll need a big long needle or several circular needles to have enough needles to knit those stitches on the border. For the colors of this version, I used Westwool Tandem. So this is our DK weight yarn, and this is four colors. That's how the pattern is written. But if you want to add extra color pops, you can use as many colors as you like. And I give yardage notes in the pattern so you know how much yarn you will need for each section. This is Norway, the main color for this large size. You're going to need five skeins of your main color in DK weight yarn and four skeins of each contrast color. So five skeins of the main, four skeins of contrast color one, four of contrast color two, and four of contrast color three. So it's a lot of yarn, but it's a lot of blanket. So we have lots of kits at Stephen and Penelope to knit this West Wool version. You could do a beautiful gray palette. This would be really striking to have a neutral blanket in your living room. I like to use the dark color as the main color, but you could do whatever you want. If you want to do the light color as your main, you could do that as well. But our kits are pre-selected uh, for choosing the main color that I think looks the coolest. So I gave you five skeins of this black for the kit and then four skeins of each contrast color. I love these heathered grays for contrasts. 
this pink and purple color palette would be really saturated and more playful. Again, I would use this dark aubergine as the main color. Contrast color one, two, and three. These color pops for the bubbles and the slip stitch sections. This slip stravaganza blanket was inspired by the slip stravaganza shawl. This was the mystery knit along in 2020. But instead of this diamond section, I gave you all bubbles for the blanket. So that's the main difference between the shawl. It has the same honeycombs, columns, but we have bubbles instead of diamonds because this is easier to knit. And once you have so many stitches, this was a little bit hard to keep track of that pattern motif. So I made it easier for you. So we get some fun bubbles instead of the diamonds. And then look at that. We have the same checks and the same chevron border. So much fun. I love translating my designs into new variations. So this fingering weight shawl became the DK weight blanket. This is the cast on at the center of the blanket using Emily Ocker's circular cast on. To begin the blanket, you're going to need circular needles, a long enough length to work the magic loop method, your main color of DK weight yarn, and a crochet hook to work the circular cast on. Have the working yarn to your left and have the tail of yarn to your right. We're going to hold on to the yarn and make a loop just like this. So bring the yarn down and on top of the working yarn, hold on to it and reach into the hole to grab a loop of working yarn and then grab a strand of working yarn through the loop. Again, go into the hole and grab a strand of yarn and pull it through and bring the working yarn through that loop. We're going to do that eight total times. Into the large hole, bring the strand of yarn through, pull it through the loop. If you're holding the yarn in your right hand, um, I don't do too much crochet, so I'm not the most comfortable with crochet, but it's just making loops with a hook. That's what crochet is, I guess. So if you're used to knitting with the yarn in your right hand, you can insert the hook down into the hole, wrap the yarn around, and then place the yarn around the hook to pull it through that loop. Again, take the hook into that big hole, wrap the yarn around, there's our new loop, and then we need to pull a strand of working yarn, Ooh, there we go, through that loop, until we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's do one more, eight total stitches. You can already go ahead and tighten up this scrap piece of yarn, the tail of yarn, and look at that, it's already tightening for the center of the blanket. Once you have eight stitches on your crochet hook, you need to transfer them onto your long circular needle. If you're more comfortable with double pointed needles for these small circumferences, you can use double pointed needles as well, but put them onto the circular needle once they're on the circular needle, we need to make sure that the stitches, you slide them over to the needle. We need to make sure that the first stitch on your left needle is next to this little tail of yarn. And here is the working tail of yarn to the left. All right, for the magic loop method to begin this blanket, we have our eight stitches. I'm going to pull my magic loop through and then here we have another loop so that our needles can meet each other. Purl eight stitches for the first round. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna pull on that other circular needle tip and this one too, so I have my new magic loops. 
and purl the last four stitches. One, two, three, and four. That's the first round. Now keep following the rounds of the blanket using the magic loop method, and we're going to start increasing stitches. So for the first increase round, we're going to do a knit front back. Knit into the front and back of the stitch. Do that all the way around. It feels a little bit tight as you work these first rounds because there's so few stitches. But continue following the rows. It gets easier and easier once we increase and have more stitches, and that's going to happen very soon. After you knit front back eight times, all the way around, now you're, you have 16 total stitches. So here is the center beginning of the blanket. And you can go ahead and pull on that little tail of yarn from the cast on. And you can see that it's already going to start tightening up that center so we don't have a big gap if you did a regular cast on. Emily Ocker's circular cast on has this nice crochet treatment that tightens the center of your blanket. As you increase toward the bubble section of your blanket, this is really, really fun because you can use all your contrast colors and it looks really nice on the back side as well. This technique is very simple to do because you only work with one color at a time, working six rounds of your contrast color. And then you'll notice in the instructions, it says knit one into the stitch from four rows below. What does that mean? It always happens on the first round of a new contrast color. So you reach the next stitch and it says knit one into the stitch from four rows below. One, two, three, four. Dive into the work, pull this new color through, and then take that stitch off the needle and drop it down. Knit three, Knit one into the stitch from four rows below. Look at the middle of the stitch. One, two, three, four. Knit into the middle of the stitch. Take it off the needle, and you can pull those loops to drop those strands above it. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Four rows below. Drop the stitch above, and look at that. We're starting to get new bubbles. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, knit three, knit one into the stitch from four rows below. One, two, three, four. And you can go ahead and pull that stitch pretty tight it doesn't need to be too loose because you want those bubbles to pop. The bubbles will pop and the colors will pop when you pull that bubble stitch a little bit tight. Knit three. And look at this. You could also go, instead of four down, you could count two from the bottom. So this might be quicker for you to visualize. One, two. If you just go into the second stitch, um, in, from the previous color, one, two, that's the right place. So you don't have to do too much counting. One more time, knit three, knit one into the stitch from four rows below. So that's all there is to it, and that makes the really fun bubble texture. This texture will flatten out a little bit when you block the blanket, so it, it will look more pronounced as you're knitting, but it might stretch out a little bit when you block your blanket. But I love that scalloped feature that it gives the contrast colors. Very beautiful on both the right side and the wrong side. 
I hope these techniques helped you get started on your slip stravaganza blanket. It's a really big and a really fun project. So I'd love to see your progress on Instagram. You can share your photos with hashtag slip stravaganza blanket. If you need help with your colors, that's my favorite thing to do. I love putting palettes together. So we have lots of kits to knit the large size at stevenandpenelope.com in our Westwell tandem. And you can use any yarn you want, add some extra colors, and I can't wait to see what you do with this pattern. So I'll see y'all in the next video.